Hey everyone, it's Nadine from Nadine Walks. Today we're gonna to be talking about mistakes that I made on the Camino de Santiago. All right, well, the bar in that village was closed. That was the only possibility of services on this entire stage, so. Hmm, I can't get out. <laughs> I don't know if the door is somehow locked or if the latch is weird. So I've just realized that I left my hat back at the albergue where I stayed last night. Ah! So I wanna start by saying there's no such thing as a perfect Camino. I wish there were, but mistakes are really a natural part of the journey. I don't know that anyone can walk up Camino without making a few mistakes along the way, but I thought I would record this video to share some of the mistakes that I have made over the years as I walked the Camino in hopes that maybe you don't repeat some of these same mistakes. So starting off with the first one, and it was a big one. I left my passport along with cash, my credit card, my debit card, my whole money wallet. I left it behind in an, in an albergue. So I was on the Camino del Norte and I was in the town of Santiana del Mar and I left in the morning unknowingly without my passport and all my money. And I walked an entire stage to arrive in Comillas. And then when I arrived there, I settled in for a good lunch. I had a couple hours so the albergue opened. And when I went to pay for my lunch, I realized I didn't have my money wallet. So luckily I was carrying some cash in my pocket. I was able to pay for lunch, but kind of in a panic, I uh, looked for a taxi and luckily, almost like magic, there was a line of taxis kind of in front of me. I was eating in the main square of the village. Um, but there were taxis there. I hopped in a taxi. We drove back to Santiago del Mar. I ran into the albergue where I had stayed. And luckily there were people cleaning the room and there was a woman who had like all my stuff in her hand. And so I was able to get it all back. The taxi was waiting for me. I ran back down, hopped in the taxi and we drove back to Comillas. I checked into the albergue. Everything worked out fine, luckily, but it could have been a lot worse. So that was a pretty big mistake. I didn't double check that morning uh, once I had packed up all my stuff. You know, I had um, kind of tucked, you know, my valuables away while I was sleeping and then forgot, of course, to, to get it in the morning. So the big lesson of this one is always double check your most important things before you set off in the morning, before you leave after a break during the day, just make sure you have all your valuables with you. So mistake number two that I made was not taking the bus or the train when I really should have. So this mistake was on my third Camino. I was on the Camino de San Salvador and I got kind of sick. So it was the last stage of that walk. Uh, the Camino de San Salvador is a pretty short Camino between the cities of Leon and Oviedo. Most pilgrims walk it in five or six days. And I had done four stages and I was on my last stage. And the night before I had been feeling a little under the weather and then I woke up the morning of day five really not feeling well. But I was walking into Oviedo that day, and at the time, I, I had a certain approach to my Caminos, and that was that I wanted to walk every single step. I really felt like it wouldn't be a complete and full Camino if I didn't walk the whole thing. And I think since it was my last day especially, I really wanted to walk on my own two feet into Oviedo. So I kind of ignored the fact that I was so sick, and I just thought, maybe it won't be so bad, I'm just gonna push on, I'm gonna walk. And I can't remember how many kilometers that day was, but it might've been a little over 30. So it was a long day. And the more I walked, the worse I felt. I was just dragging myself along, really wasn't feeling well at all. And it was a super challenging walk. But the real mistake here was well, truly one walking while I was feeling sick. But, you know, I think sometimes on the Camino, we might be more in the middle of nowhere or we stayed the night before in a super small village and there really aren't public transportation options or it's more difficult to find a taxi. But in this case, I was heading into a major city. And so like every town I passed along the way had a train station. And I think at one point I was walking like parallel to train tracks, watching trains go by. And I have this like vivid memory of, kind of arriving into a town, seeing the train station right there, stopping, staring at it and thinking, should I just go over, spend a couple euros on a ticket in 10 minutes, I can be in Oviedo. 
and I can find a place to stay and I can rest. And instead of doing that, which I should have done, I just kept on walking. And in the end, you know, it was okay. I made it to Oviedo. Nothing really bad happened. I took a rest day in Oviedo, but then I continued to be kind of sick for a while. It took me a while to kind of shake whatever I had. And I do think possibly I might have recovered a little more quickly if I had rest initially that day. So I think the big thing for me, this was also a really big lesson, is that, you know, I no longer kind of make myself walk every step of a Camino. It's still kind of my ideal. I would love to walk as much of a Camino as possible. But if I'm feeling sick, if I'm short on time, if I made these wonderful friendships and want to slow my walk down a little to stay with them, I am much more likely to be flexible and kind of adjust my plans. And I think in this case, especially when I'm sick or injured or whatever it is, I really learned a val valuable lesson to not push myself too much. Lesson there is if there is a bus or a train and you're not feeling well, get on. No one's counting how many steps you take on the Camino. No one is kind of standing there at the end to check off whether you walk the whole thing or not. Just make sure to take care of yourself. Mistake number three that I made was, I think, compromising the way that I wanted to walk my Camino. So this was on my first Camino, the Camino Frances, and I had met a pilgrim and we walked together a little bit for a few days, but then he wanted to kind of do the rest of his Camino with me. I think we had met about halfway through my Camino and he had just started. And I think he, well, I'm not sure what was going on, not entirely with him, but he was really following me and keeping tabs on me and really wanted to walk the Camino with me. And without going into too much detail because it is a kind of complicated or was a complicated situation, um, despite me kind of expressing that I was here to do the Camino on my own, I didn't really want to stick with anyone or check in with them. I needed to feel free to kind of do my own thing. Despite all of that, I at a few times still kind of compromised that in order to, I don't know, not disappoint him to, you know, I was probably a bit of a people pleaser. I wanted to help out others. I didn't maybe hold as firm to what I knew to be true about how I wanted to walk my Camino. And I think that did kind of, that whole experience kind of affected the second half of that Camino. And it wasn't in a horrible way and nothing bad happened, but I do know that I wasn't walking truly how I wanted to. Now, Again, I know I'm being a little vague with some of this and not going into a ton of detail because it would take a long time to explain it all. I think quite possibly I could have continued to say, I need to walk my own Camino, I'm gonna separate. And that might not have changed anything. I think this pilgrim was on his own journey and for whatever reason, he felt that I was a big part of that. I think to have really kind of separated myself, I might've had to kind of get off track from all the other people that I was kind of walking with and kind of in similar stages with. And I don't know that I was willing to do that at the time, but I do think a big lesson for me in that was that I felt like I did not want to compromise the way that I do the Camino for anyone else. And that doesn't mean that I, I won't be there to help out other pilgrims or sometimes, you know, like compromise certain things. But I think that was a big I think that second half of my first Camino, I, I walked it in ways that I didn't really want to, and I knew I didn't want to walk it in that way. And it's a huge reason I think I finished that first Camino and felt that I wasn't done with the Camino, or the Camino wasn't done with me. Huge reason I returned the second time. So in a nutshell, I would say, you know, that mistake is sort of compromising on the way I wanted to walk for someone else. And I think really the lesson here is kind of walk the Camino the way that I know I want to and the way that I need to. Okay, fourth mistake that I made on the Camino de Santiago. This one might be maybe a little controversial or you might have some different opinions, but the mistake was when I walked the Camino del Norte for the first time, this was my second Camino, second time on the Camino, instead of continuing and walking the entire Norte, I walked maybe two thirds of it. And then when the path splits where pilgrims can continue on the Camino or they can veer off and take the Primitivo to Santiago, I took the Camino Primitivo. And I, I love the Camino Primitivo. 
I am really glad that I walked it. But at the time, this was my second Camino, and I didn't know that I was gonna keep coming back to do this. I kind of thought, you know, I'm here for a second time, I wanna have this experience, but I might not come back anymore to walk the Camino. I might not come back for a long time. And so I had heard so many good things about the Primitivo and so many pilgrims from what I read and just a few other pilgrims I was talking to, it seemed like a lot of them did the Norte when it got to the split, they took the Primitivo. It kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You get the coasts on the Norte and you get those beautiful mountain stages on the Primitivo. So that kind of had been my thought process going into that Camino. As I got toward the split, I was feeling just a little hesitant about going on the Primitivo. I was really enjoying the Camino del Norte. I had met a lot of pilgrims and while I wasn't kind of walking with a group or anyone in particular, I knew there were a bunch of pilgrims around me who I had met over the past few weeks. And as it turned out, most of the pilgrims that I had met continued on the Norte and only a few really went on the Primitivo. So that when I did go on the Primitivo, I really kind of started with a brand new group, group of pilgrims. And that wasn't so bad, but I think it felt much more disjointed than I expected. I truly felt like I was on a brand new Camino. And when I started the Primitivo, it felt like I had left the Norte behind, which I had, <laughs> but I was really missing it. I was just missing that path. And it took me time to adjust to the Primitivo, several days. And then even when I was there, I ended up walking it really fast. I met some wonderful friends and did have a great experience, but the Primitivo just kind of blurred by and I never felt like a true Camino to me. I think because of missing the Norte and adjusting and doing it really fast. I did walk the Primitivo for a second time in 2021, and that was like a completely different experience that felt like its own full Camino. And I am still, I've, I've walked the Norte, the full route twice, but it's kind of funny. I've never done it all in one go. It's always been bits and pieces. So one day I really want to return and walk the entire route of the Norte in one go. And I think Knowing what I know now, knowing that I, I've kept returning to walk the Camino over and over, I wish that year when I'd first done the Norte, I had stayed with the Norte and walked the whole thing. Now, that may just be personally, you know, I think so many pilgrims have great experiences walking the Norte and Primitivo combo. It is a wonderful combo, but I think just for me and that year and what I was experiencing, I wish I had stayed on the Norte. Next mistake is that I don't take enough photos of other people when I'm on the Camino. Now, I take photographs all the time, I take video, but it tends to be the landscape and the food I'm eating, the albergues I'm staying in, my feet as I'm walking, but I never take enough photos of the people that I meet, the friends that I make. And some of this I think is just my shyness. I always just feel a little timid asking others if I could take their photo, if we could all be in a photo together. So it's something that I think I've been aware of since my first Camino and every year I tell myself, I want to get better at this. I want to get better at this. I still have some work to do, but I think I noticed after the first Camino, especially, I just cherished the photos I've had of my friends and the people I met and I just felt like there weren't enough of them. So future Caminos, I want to keep working on taking more photos of the people that I meet. Next mistake was not stopping as soon as I felt a kind of hot spot or blister forming on my foot, not stopping to take care of it and continuing walking. And what happens when you have a blister developing and you don't do anything about it is the blister is probably just gonna form and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what happened to me. So I was on, again, the second Camino, I was on the Norte, I was walking, I felt like a rubbing on the bottom of my foot and I just kept going and I noticed Maybe that night when I took off my shoes and socks, there was a tiny, tiny little blister in the bottom of my foot. And very naively, I thought, oh, maybe it'll just go away. <laughs> and I think one reason for this is that I didn't have any blisters on my first Camino. And so I think I got a little overly confident and I'm like, nah, I don't, I won't get blisters on the Camino. I don't have to worry about this. 
So I just kept walking on it for several days. And of course that tiny blister just got bigger and bigger and bigger, kind of spread across the bottom of my foot and was pretty painful for a while. Uh, I will, let's see if I can remember to include a photo here of me standing on the beach. I'm in my bare feet, which probably wasn't good. I'm smiling, but at that very moment when the photo was taken, I had a huge, that huge blister on my foot and I was in quite a bit of pain. <laughs> so anyway, I did finally, ask for some help, you know, other pilgrims in an albergue noticed me limping around, they loaned me some blister supplies, I took care of it, I drained it, and it immediately felt so much better and was fine. But I think, you know, in the future, if I ever feel something going on with my foot, I'm gonna stop and try to do what I can to take care of it. Um, always try to do my best to prevent blisters, but don't ignore a kind of hot spot on your foot. If you think there might be a blister forming, Take care of it, ask someone for help, ask someone what you can do if you're not sure so that you can try to prevent the blister from becoming a bigger problem. And then the last mistake, and I'm sure I've made lots of others, but the last mistake we're gonna talk about here is not drinking enough water. So generally on the Camino, I drink plenty of water and now it's not a problem for me. But on my very first Camino, probably the first week or so, I wasn't drinking enough water. And it wasn't even that I wasn't paying attention to it. Like I was carrying a lot of water with me. Whenever I'd get to a fountain, if I needed to top off my water, I would, but I just wasn't drinking enough. And to be honest, and it's kind of funny, but I, was really nervous in the beginning of that Camino about going to the bathroom outside. <laughs> so growing up, I just wasn't a very outdoorsy person. I had never used the bathroom outside. And I knew that it would probably have to happen at some point on that first Camino. And while yes, there are lots of bars and restaurants and villages that you pass through, places where you can use a toilet and use a real bathroom, I just kind of knew though that chances were I was gonna have to go outside at some point. And I think in those first days, I just didn't really want to. I felt kind of nervous about it because I hadn't done it before. And I think I was just kind of holding back on drinking water and I wasn't drinking enough. Now, luckily, nothing bad ever happened to me. You know, I, I was a little dehydrated. I kind of was noticing some signs of dehydration, but nothing bad. Um, but I think when I realized this, that I wasn't drinking enough, I just finally said, okay, Nadine, this is ridiculous. Drink water. You're trying to walk across an entire country in the summer. You got to drink water. And then I did use the bathroom outside. <laughs> it took a couple of times for me to kind of get comfortable with the process. But once I did, you know, it's no big deal. It was totally fine. So now I just, I drink so much water when I'm walking the Camino. I go to the bathroom a lot, but it's okay. It's not so hard, nothing to be scared of. Um, so make sure when you're on the Camino to drink plenty of water. So those were some of the mistakes that I've made while walking the Camino de Santiago. Please, as ever, chime in in the comment section below. If you've walked the Camino, what mistakes have you made? Um, any funny stories to share? We'd love to hear them. So as ever, I'll be back soon with more Buen Camino.